it gives us joy. Hi, people. Um, hey, everyone. Hello? No? Not that kind of day? Avril, why don't you say hi? Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here, and I'm just enjoying this conversation with the Magda and Tracy that I happen to walk in on. <laughs> and I can't wait to, I love the hashtag, my kind of kind. It's, it's, it's a bit of a tongue twister, my kind of kind. But it's, exactly. it's, yeah, but I think it's, it says it all, doesn't it? So I'm really, really looking forward to this conversation. Hello, everybody. And I'm so happy to be here. So we're all here for tongue twisters. We like to confuse the brain. And then we like to unconfuse it. It's why we're in business. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, um, we're going to get started. And um, Tracy's going to run the show. She asked me to be here too. I don't know why, but we'll find out soon. But because today's topic is kindness, and it's kindness month. I'm so excited um, because kindness is such a great thing, isn't it? And I remember when I first moved to, um, to the US and I learned English, um, I actually thought that the people told me that like kindness was something like niceness, and that totally isn't. So anyway, I have a long history with the word kindness and with words. Um, but yes, uh, June is kindness month at Kocharya, and we're going to commemorate, celebrate, participate, other eight uh, with the hashtag my kind of kind. So that is your homework, everyone. I'm telling you ahead of time. So all you overachievers can write it down and not forget at the end, your homework after listening, watching this webinar, you will go to your favorite social network and you're going to use the hashtag my kind of kind and tell the world, video, image, words, whatever, something about kindness, kindness you experience, kindness you've given, kindness you've witnessed, uh, whatever kindness means to you. And, and let's, you know, let's do our best to get this um, hashtag going and spread a bit of kindness in the world because, you know, things suck right now in many places. So let's make them unsuck a little. So that's my kind of kind. Please, please, please support and participate. And um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I have a story. I always have a story. This is what happens, Tracy, when you invite me. So um, to start Kindness Month and celebrate International Children's Day, happy birthday to everyone, because we're all children. We're all someone's daughter. We're all someone's son. And if somebody gets that reference, you're my best friend forever. No, no one? Cool. The song. Trace, because the song. It's a, it's a song, yeah. Which song? Uh, it's it, it's coming to mind. It's from the eighties. I can sing yes. it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's Mike we're and the Mechanic. We're all Mechanics. someone's daughter. We're all someone's son. Isn't no, it John Mike and the Mechanics? I huh? think the band that did it was Mike and the Mechanics, right? No, but very close because it sounds like that. John Farnham. Oh, He's John Farnham. Farnham. Yes, yes. Yes, anyway, <laughs> big side note. So happy birthday, children of the world. But anyway, so to celebrate Children's Day and day, date, date, um, and kindness month at Kocharya, I decided to help one of my four children, Sorsha, with this giant tangle she had on her bum. So right before this, I was brushing and cutting and she stabbed me in the stomach. So the story, the moral of the story is that kindness, you shouldn't expect things in return because you might get stabbed. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Yeah. That's, that's actually a great lead in because um, I think that's one of the things that um, really embodies true kindness is when we actually don't expect anything in return, right? But, um, yeah, this is, I'm so excited to be having this conversation and I feel like it's synchronicity because as you know, um, Magda, I messaged you, I read an article that Ram wrote about social media and the last line he said was, post something kind, do it now. <laughs> it, was, it was 
I'm not saying that verbatim, but that was something along those lines. And I just thought, and, and it was, it came at a time that you and I, Mega, had been having a lot of conversations around social media and the news and just about like how, you know, I, I have to choose when I'm going to engage with it because it's just so overwhelming. I mean, there's, um, as we all know, <laughs> anytime you turn on the news, it's devastating, right? And, um, and then social media comes with its own pain points, especially when it comes to opinions and, and all of those things that we're seeing showing up on there. So I don't know, when I read that, I just thought, like, how, you know, how amazing if we all make this effort to take on a challenge to actually put something out in the world that's really positive. And literally what a couple of days later Como messaged me we had talked about kindness and then she mentioned that this webinar that she couldn't be here for was going to be around kindness and it just felt like this is synchronicity this is <laughs> this is the universe showing up and saying this is what we need to focus on and I know personally for me this is what I need to focus on you know um looking at um and we'll talk about it in more ways but just finding the beauty of every moment and, and, and noticing it because only when I can do that can I actually be kind to others and kind to myself and kind of put that energy out there and it's it's possible it, it's hard to do at times but it is possible and I think that's why we're all here not just here but everyone that's attending or everyone that's in this community is that they really want to show up in a way that enhances and adds value versus um detracts or overwhelms so anyway that's my spiel <laughs> and uh stabbed in the stomach and what even if you get stabbed in the stomach as a result exactly yeah but well that's the thing like and you know and i'd love to talk about that like we never we we want to do these things from a particular intent or value that we're looking to express and not look at what the outcome is so whether that outcome is either getting something positive back or whether that outcome is thinking that will avoid pain or anything along those lines, that's then being kind for the wrong reason, right? But um, being kind just for the sake of being kind, I think is pure kindness. Yeah. And um, having said all of that, Avril, <laughs> really excited to see you here as well. And would just love for you to maybe Introduce yourself because I think this might be your first. Is this your first co charter webinar? Yes. yes. Hey, welcome. I, <laughs> yeah, please, please introduce yourself and um, and just uh, yeah, share a little bit about what's bubbling up for you right now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tracy and Magda. So I'm really happy to be here. So. I'm an ACC coach and starting my PCC journey with the Kocharya. And I, I'm a mindfulness uh, facilitator and an emotional agility coach. And I teach meditation and yoga. So those are uh, the different uh, things that I bring to the table. And I've been studying Buddhist philosophy for about 15 years. And the whole topic about kindness. Oh, by the way, I live in India. I'm in Bangalore. And my full name is Avril Quadris. And uh, I'm so happy to see so many people and I can see so much happening in the chat, though I'm not going to open it because I, I get uh, shiny object syndrome and I get distracted. <laughs> but I was just telling Magda before uh, everybody came on that I just love the hashtag and it speaks really, really deeply to me, my kind of kind. You know, kindness is um, such a daunting, at the same time, such an inviting concept to embrace because we're, we're always looking for kindness. No matter where, where we are, who we are, we're always looking for kindness to, to experience the kindness of someone. But I think when it comes to expressing kindness, it takes a lot. And this is just my own personal journey. So I was in show business in Bollywood for a long time. And kindness is, it's just not a concept over there. No one is really kind to each other because it's a doggy dog world and everyone is really just out for themselves. And that's just the way it is. And what happens to you is you learn to be unkind to yourself. 
being unkind to yourself is actually the only way to survive because you're not allowed to really express the essence of who you are as a full potential spiritual being and there's no concept of introspection as such it's always very outward everything is so outward so i think i was the most unkind person to myself and very selfish very competitive expecting things from others but never willing to give and i think kindness for me was very alien and i really had to kind of dig deep to actually start being kind to myself i found it so foreign and i felt like i was so being so self indulgent and when i started uh, studying buddhist philosophy i understood that kindness doesn't always have to be uh you know like when you when you when you talk about kindness it seems uh, you know i don't know what the right word is but the word that's coming to mind is that people perceive kindness to be a little weak does anybody resonate with that like you know and people are so scared of being weak right we're all so scared of this perception of that others have of us and especially being kind to yourself taking a day off when you don't feel well or telling people you know this is way beyond my boundaries and i'm going to be kind to myself and put myself first it's so looked down upon it it it's almost makes people feel that you're selfish and so you know i just like to ask people and ask you tracy and magda as um have you has anybody ever experienced this guilt that uh, you feel when you first start experiencing kindness towards yourself because you know i'm uh, everybody here you know i i've had many deep conversations with uh, tracy um you know over the last couple of months uh, thanks to magda introducing us and i've always uh, had this feeling that she's uh, tracy exudes a certain energy you know and even with magda i've hardly had any interaction but they exude this energy of kindness being kind to themselves because i feel people feel guilty for being kind to themselves and i think tracy is kind to herself i've had so many conversations and i always come off feeling like a better person or feeling like i've learned something because i often feel that people if they don't experience kindness within them because it's such an intrinsic um concept that if you don't start from the inside out then it doesn't radiate and what you don't have you can't give so that's my small contribution and i would love others to jump in because now i'm feeling like i'm hogging all this time sorry um Well, I first of all, thank you for expressing that. Um and it's I, I it's actually hard for me your your words were so kind and it's hard for me to receive kind words in 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 a way which is interesting and I need to explore. Um but it is very much appreciated. Um actually like kindness to myself is something that I have to very consciously apply. It's it doesn't come naturally. <laughs> Um but one thing that I'm really grateful for is I notice the language that I speak to myself now and then I I I get intentional about addressing it um or not a, yeah so and 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 so I'm this is why this is a wonderful reminder because we we have to start off by being kind to ourselves we we're never it's going to be very difficult to be truly kind to other people if we're if we're beating ourselves up right it's that old story of like that oxygen mask it has to come here first yeah and so like you know i i was wondering when you were asking i'm like i don't know that i necessarily felt guilty about being kind to myself i just think i felt uncomfortable i think it was like that feeling of it's really weird but like vulnerability with myself Yeah. and 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 it it was so foreign to me and it still is sometimes but 
I notice it in little ways, like, like, you know, when I'm, when I'm feeling stressed, like I'll naturally go like this and I hold my own hand. And it's just like these little gestures that I do that are very loving to myself that I never would have, you know, that may, may not have manifested before. And so I have to actually, I think part of this, and sorry, I'm bubbling up right now, but like part of this exploration is noticing those little moments and noticing what we're doing successfully, because only by doing that and acknowledging it, can we continue to develop that, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I may, something just came up for me when, uh, you know, when you, uh, somebody, I don't know who said this earlier, but one of you said that we, we're expecting kindness from people and uh, it's always good to receive. Like even I, I think I reiterated it, it's always good to receive kindness, but kindness comes with an expectation, doesn't it? What do you mean? In the sense that you're expecting certain people to be kind to you always. Like, for example, maybe your grandmother, your mother, a friend, you're expecting people to be kind to you. So there is an expectation of kindness from other people. Like, you know, you mentioned with your pet, right? Like you got stabbed, even though you were kind, you got stabbed in the stomach. Uh, and, you know, with a pet, I mean, Pets teach you so much. I've been just looking at the chat a little bit and uh, somebody was talking about, uh, you know, doggies, right? So you, you, your pets teach you so much because you're going to go out of your way to be kind, to be loving. You clean up their, you know, their mess. You, you know, you do everything for them and you're never expecting anything in return for them. But when it comes to human beings, we're always expecting somebody to be kind to us because there's an expectation there. And I feel like if we, it's, it's very difficult to not have that expectation of people. You expect certain people to be kind to you. So there's always like a little bit of a weight there. But I was just thinking, I mean, and I, I totally agree with you, Tracy, self-kindness is the toughest thing uh, to do, you know? It's also entangled with, you know, your self-image, your self-love, the way you were conditioned, you know? Even, even your conditioning as, as a child matters a lot when it comes to things like kindness and self-love. And I was just uh, thinking about what you said, vulnerability. Because when you're kind, you're automatically vulnerable. Because like I was saying, like kindness is equated a little bit with weakness, especially um, the way people perceive it. You know, no, no one wants to be vulnerable, but when you're vulnerable with yourself, um, and I also think that, you know, as coaches, if we don't have self-kindness, if we don't practice kindness, then we really can't empathize with the coaches, right? Mm -hmm. We're not able to really connect with them and show them, you know, unconditional positive regard and kindness, like genuine, uh, you know, not some kind of a contrived kindness, but a genuine uh, kindness. I don't know if that's making any sense. I'll just stop talking now. No, don't, don't ever stop talking. You're awesome. Um, I, I did want to jump in because there's two things that are bubbling up for me now. Sure. So I don't expect people to be kind. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Not, not like in general. I expect, like you said, when you said that grandmother or mother, like, yes, those, of course, people that I, that I know and love and trust, of course. Um, but in general, I just like, I, I oscillate in life in general between being too trusting and not trusting enough and i was actually tracy you proud of me i was reflecting on this yesterday um i was reflecting on kind of events in my life when different things like like big things right when uh something got broken or something got fixed for lack of a better word and trust is something that um gets broken and it's you know harder to get back to that. And anyway, I started correlating these different things that happen, and it's it's been like this up and down relationship with you know trusting people. And I think to me that's related to expecting kindness. Um, it's like if I'm doing something, I actually don't expect anything in return. Um, partly because like then it's not kind if I'm expecting something in my view, but also um, I just, I, I don't think that everyone is so good. Maybe that just speaks to my kind of baggage that, that I need to maybe carry and still and work through. Um, but yeah, I don't expect it. That's one thing. And the other thing that popped up for me was how subjective all of this is. And maybe that's why I 
don't expect kindness from people. Maybe I just don't find the words to define what I actually mean, but that's all I can think of right now. But um, but it's so subjective because whenever I, I struggle with self kindness a lot, a lot, it's so easy for me to be kind to others. Um, it's really hard for me to be kind to myself and I know it and um, I'm still in the uh, con conscious incompetence <laughs> part of that. But, you know, giving gifts, for example, like I literally, I, I love it. I love it so much. I love seeing joy gifts of people. I hate getting them. I hate buying myself things. Like it's just, we can do a whole series on Magda's issues. Um, <laughs> but the subjectivity, um, what I was thinking about is when I, when I am kind to myself, when I do do these things um you know one of my <laughs> i have so many guiding principles one of the other things is like when i my social media even though i don't have many followers like i i whenever i say something on there is because i genuinely you know feel something whether it's joy or amusement or whatever and um or sadness anything like i try to be unfiltered um and i do share the moments of kindness to myself as well and what's always happens without fail is like completely opposite reactions from people somebody will always be like oh it's okay blah 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 like you know don't beat yourself up i'm like i'm not beating myself up this is this is me showing kindness to myself like there was um one time i was literally like rolling around in dirt and i referred to myself i think as dirty or something and it was like i i know that the person who said something meant totally meant well but like I wasn't putting myself down when I said I was dirty like for me being in dirt and like covered in mud and scratched up and disgusting like to me that's to me that's self-care to me that's kindness to myself because I get to be and do the thing that I love which is be in nature with my creatures with my flowers with my glass of wine <laughs> like to me that is the epitome of kindness so if you see me tired and dirty that's a good day Thank you for sharing that, Magda. I'll remember that. I, I, I love your energy and your spirit. And I, I mean, I, I must say that that's amazing that you don't expect a kindness uh, from people. I mean, that, that, I mean, I, 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 that's all I can say. That's amazing. Because I think, at least for me, I expect kindness, you know, especially when you're being kind to somebody and sometimes you get a rub, uh, you know, you get rubbed off the wrong way. The mm -hmm. first thing that happens is judgment. Like I was kind, what, what happened? Why didn't the person see it, right? You have all this narrative going on in your mind because you, you know, you did something kind and then of course, you know, it's supposed to be met with kindness. And then you, and then you, and then it makes me start thinking like, so am I just kind because it's conditional? So kindness is just a contrived concept for me or is it going deeper? So I think on those levels, I think I also have to work on myself, even though mindfulness really helps me and, you know, yeah. putting things in perspective helps me. And like you said, your reality and your truth is never going to be the same for another person. Like rolling, rolling around in the dirt is something that you thoroughly enjoy and you're in your element. But somebody else, it may be something completely different from, for, you know, for somebody else. So like we were saying earlier, and I think Magda, you said it, that it's so, this, even this concept it's so, so subjective. And it's like, you know, it's seven levels deep. And, you know, where are we on that scale of seven levels deep? Love to hear from other people. Tracy, you've been very quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, they're just processing so much about this. And um, I was thinking about, like, expecting kindness from people. And I think there's a level that maybe we do it consciously and unconsciously. Like, for example, when we talked about a parent or grandparent, right? That's still imposing an expectation on someone. Like, imagine, you know, you know, think of how often I know for myself that I'm especially hurt when someone's snappy with me that I'm close to. That's because by default, I'm expecting something different from them, right? And so I think that we do have this, like, underlying expectation that I know the part of the work I need to do on myself <laughs> is trying to shed that, you know, like, like imposing expectations on anyone is setting ourselves up to measure them <laughs> as to where they're coming in. And so the more we can be conscious of that and, 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 and aware, I think the more powerful we'll be. 
Um, but I think in, you know, in the past, I know for myself, when I would do a kind act, I would want to be acknowledged for it. So then I, that wasn't true kindness. Like I know that wasn't true kindness. That was, that was me. trying to, I guess, find attachment, I guess that would be the one way and, 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 and trying to relate to people and people please and all of the things that come up for me, even still. And so when I think about kindness now, I think that where it's the most challenging is to be kind to those who are unkind. <laughs> That's really being kind without expectation right? When we know that maybe there's somebody that isn't someone that we relate to that has a different viewpoint than us that we don't get, and we can still be kind, then, and not do it because also we're being like, oh, there I am, I'm being a compassionate person, <laughs> but genuinely come from that space of wanting to put I guess, love out into the world. I don't know what else, how else to put it, then that's true kindness. <laughs> and that's something I'm working on. I'm not saying I'm there, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So I'm seeing like a lot of uh, people responding in the chat as to what kindness is for them. So somebody, Deepa said that for me, kindness is Mother Teresa. Compassion is one step beyond empathy. Yeah. And someone's talking about Magda's honesty. Magda, you know, it's interesting. I wanted to come back to that. You talked about how you can be kind to others, but you find it hard to be kind to yourself. So you like buying gifts or that type of thing. But what I would like, you use that as an example, right? But when I think about you, knowing like you've you we've had conversations where you're like today I went out and I worked in my garden for four hours right that's self-kindness <laughs> what's right and so like I think noticing that like true kindness is actually meeting ourselves and others with where they're at and so maybe with where you're at isn't buying yourself something but it's like getting out in your garden <laughs> Right. Yeah. Totally. For sure, Tracy. And I do it and I'm aware of it. And when I do do it, I, I think where I'm disconnecting in my own brain is when I go into the garden for four hours and I come back all sweaty and dirty. And my sister looks at me and goes, uh, uh you're not coming in the house like that. And I literally drop my clothes outside the kitchen door. <laughs> That's how disgusting I get you guys. <laughs> um, I, I, it's not that I have guilt about having done it, but I kind of go, okay, well, I just spent those four hours on myself. Therefore, I have four hours to make up for whatever, whether it's housework, you know, because like I have these, we all have paradigms, right? My paradigm is that there are certain hours within which I consider that I really should be working. Um, versus I should be doing housework or whatever. And um, that's in itself is crazy because we're a global company and I basically work slash live 24 hours a day. Like there are no set hours. So just show you how crazy I am about that. But I, I, I do have this like, I don't know, thing where I can't just be like, that was four hours in the garden. The bees are happy. The birds are fed. Even the slugs are there and I have a friendly skunk who comes in who I have conversations with so he doesn't spray me and I don't, you know, chew him. An opossum and a raccoon um, is very cute. I love them. Anyway, I digress. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, garden. So after <laughs> shiny objects, Avril, I relate. Uh, but after those four hours in the garden, like, yeah, I, I wish I could just be like, full stop. But I'm usually like, okay, so what do I need to catch up on? Yeah, I was just, um, I was just thinking about, you know, we're always talking about 
you know, do kind things, be kind. But somebody in the comments said something that I quite kind of kind of liked. It said, be kind to being kind. I think that's kind of like shifting your perspective completely to just being instead of always doing, right? Kind of, you know, being kind, like just living. I mean, um, when you kind of embody it. And what does kindness mean to us on a broader perspective? I mean, if we were to move from the inside out, I mean, what would that mean? I mean, kindness can be so many things to so many people. Like we said, it's so subjective. So I'm just kind of thinking and wanting other people's views on, you know, when we, when we are being kind, so instead of doing, you know, like humans are always just being, right? We are human beings. And so if we're just being in the moment and being kind, how does that really, uh, you know, traction us out into a broader space as coaches, as, you know, uh, mothers, wives, husbands, friends, lovers, how does that translate into taking it into like a dynamic outside concept? I I'm just wonder wondering to know how people think about that. I do want to jump in because the, um, the what is kindness is kind of the first thing I thought about when we looked at this, uh, my kind of kind hashtag. And um, I put this up on Coach Nook, our online community. Uh, the first phrase that came to my mind is acting out of love and compassion, not out of guilt or obligation, which is one of those things that when, you know, Ram introduced me to this concept, my, my world got turned upside down and it's, it's, it's changed so much how I think and feel again, still working on myself, obviously. <laughs> um, but it's, it's been tremendously helpful. It's, it's the motivation I think for, for kindness. Like, I don't know. I, I get really flustered a lot when I see these protests uh, against women's rights or when, um, I don't know, sorry, I'm not gonna get, wanna get political, but I get really, really upset when people um, criticize or attack other people's, you know, personality, sexual orientation, whatever. As long as you're not hurting anybody, it's none of your effing business if somebody else is sleeping with 10 men or one woman or 15, I don't know, cats. Not sexually, obviously, because that's that's not that is hurting somebody. Ugh. Wow. Okay. Sorry, guys. You can't trust me to be live anywhere. Um, but like, it's literally none of your business. Like, as long as you're not hurting anybody, and you're acting out of love and compassion, to me, that's kindness. And whether that love and compassion motivates what you do for others or yourself or the freaking dinner you're cooking doesn't matter like as long as you're not hurting anybody and using those two principles i think that's kindness to me yeah tracy you want to jump in i i i i resonate with a lot of what you just said you know live and let live you know that kind of thing you know tracy yeah i think like there's <laughs> there's so much that's coming up for me right now but um to, to maybe address what kindness is to me, that's something I'm still exploring, but like, um, I, and Avril, you'll relate to this, but I've been listening, I was listening to a talk by Thich Nhat Hanh, and it was about um, the different dimensions of love. I'm gonna get this wrong, but it doesn't matter. So it's like loving kindness, compassion, joy and equanimity, and, I've been thinking a lot about the joy aspect of it because I think it's something that we forget. <laughs> and so, you know, when you think about kindness, I think in a sense, being joyful is being kind, right? When you think about that person that comes into the room and their energy just elevates everyone else's, that's not having to even ever give anything physical or even say a word. It's literally just their vibration, <laughs> their energy, their nervous system. You can look at it from a spiritual or a scientific point of view. Scientifically, we know people's nervous systems like align. That's kind, you know? And so I think what I'm really working on because I can work on, like you said, the doing, right? Going out there and doing things and saying things to myself and, and, and you know, acting a certain way towards myself and others. But 
when I think about the being, it's like, am I a positive, light, joyful being? Because as long as I'm not, then I'm not being kind to anyone, not myself or others. So yeah, sorry, that was my little tangent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just thought I, of I, something. I'm sorry. Is sure. it okay to Sorry, Absolutely. Avril. Absolutely. Um, you, you asked, you know, how it relates to coaching, et cetera, because this is a coaching webinar. Um, so joy and all these things we're talking about, it's, it sounds like we're describing a little kid, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it really is about being childlike. And um, I actually wrote this long thing about being childlike because apparently I am a lot. Um, and someone asked me about it. But as I was writing that, uh, just thinking now, like all these, a lot of the things we're talking about today came, came up, like kids don't have the baggage. Kids don't have this internal, <laughs> I'll go in the garden because it makes me, it's kind to like, no, they just go in the garden because it's freaking mud and it's fun. Like, you know, it's pure joy. And um, I remember when my first um, mastery program that we were starting at Coach Aria, or we, when I was here, their master before me, but um, I asked Ram to give me some words around, you know, how would you describe this mastery program that's, you know, different from everything else we do? Like what, that, what makes a master coach? And he used the phrase that it's being childlike and unlearning. And like, I rolled my eyes big time, like, oh my God, Ram, like, I can't, like, what do you expect me to be like, hey, a bunch of adults spend a bunch of money and time to become a child. Like, are you on crack? Um, and of course, you know, that's just me not knowing stuff. <laughs> which I learned but he's so right it's about having that curiosity the joy the kindness the the lack of baggage like being childlike is being a masterful coach being childlike is being happy right like I I kind of take offense at when people say that um you're immature or you're um in general not just about me because that I don't take offense very easily <laughs> um but like you're reverting back to your childhood great let's all freaking do it like can you imagine how many problems we would solve if all of us just wanted to roll in the mud for the sake of rolling in the mud because it's fun holy crap yeah yeah i i can i can see that because you know children they don't have any agendas right they just they just themselves and i think uh, tracy really uh, spoke about my favorite word so my favorite word in the whole world is joy because you know like when you're sad, and even if you say the word joy, joy, you can't be sad and say the word joy. It, the energy around joy is so infectious. You just have to start feeling better. And I think that embodies kindness for me because to be kind, you have to be joyful. I, I, I don't think a kind person uh, can be, you know, uh, you know, I mean, mental health is something that resonates a lot with me. And I find that when people are not in a good mental space, there is no kindness, first to themselves, and then there is no kindness to share with others. And I think joy, Tracy, for me is like that buzzword. And like Magda said, right, children, we need to be childlike because kindness comes from the heart. It's not something that we can conceptualize, right? Even though we're talking about it and we're giving it so many words, but don't you think it's like, it's just a feeling. And you do it like all of us were saying, you do it because you do it, because you feel it, because you embody it, because you are it. There, there shouldn't be an expectation when we are being kind to other people, the kindness itself gives us joy. So then when our pet stabs us in the stomach, it's like, it's okay, it's fine. You know, I mean, what are you gonna do, right? So I think, and then somebody uh, said, uh, sent a message here and said, is forgiveness kindness? I love that question. Is forgiveness kindness? For me, definitely, definitely, definitely 200%. Because you can't forgive yourself if you're not kind to yourself. You can't forgive another person if you're not kind to yourself. And if you don't forgive, you know, it, it's like two ways, right? They feed off each other. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, the first thing that came up for me is forgiveness is one of the biggest kindness we can give ourselves. Forgiveness of another person. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing that I was thinking when we're talking about forgiveness is that forgiveness doesn't depend upon the other person. 
right? I mean, for me, it would be, uh, I mean, and it, it, you know, in Buddhism, we were kind of, uh, I, I, it, first of all, Buddhism is not a religion, it's a way of life. So I'm just talking from a, a life perspective. Um, when we forgive somebody, it's a way to free ourselves from the shackles of having that guilt or animosity or anger. And like you said, Tracy, it's the greatest form of kindness because I was the most unforgiving, vengeful. I would plot people's death. I would plot their revenge in my head. I would, I would think about how I was going to carve them up, you know, especially ex-boyfriends and, you know, my competitors and how I was going to slip them up. And I was so vindictive. It was just unbelievable how vindictive and shallow I was in show business. And I thought that it kept me going in show business because I had to always be on my guard, you know, like who's coming for me, you know? And my manager was the most unkind person to me. It's their job to be unkind to you because they need to keep you insecure, right? That's what they do. And so, Forgiveness was not even in my vocabulary. And once I learned to forgive myself, I learned to forgive others. And I was, you know, a part of the Me Too movement in India. And people asked me, why don't you comment in the papers? And we're going to shoot this guy down. He's so famous. And one more girl comes out against him. And it's going to be like, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do it because I'm kind to myself. I've forgiven myself. I've forgiven him. And it's not, I'm not going to make a big thing about this because this is not like a 15 minute of fame thing, right? So I, I, I totally agree with you when, you know, when you forgive yourself, it's the kindest thing you can do. And then it doesn't matter because the Buddha once said, uh, anger is like poison that you want to feed somebody else, but you feed it to yourself. I'm just paraphrasing. Like you, you want someone else to drink the poison, but you drink it because, you know, it kills you first. So it, the same thing with forgiveness or, or being unkind, you know, I think it, it kills you first and makes you feel so discontent within yourself that, you know, sugar doesn't taste sweet. <laughs> I don't know. I'd love someone to jump in. I'm feeling a bit lonely. Now, now. I'm hungry because you mentioned sugar and the first thing I think of is cake. Because <laughs> um, I just call him as a human. You know, it's, it's interesting. Like I agree with you on so many levels and then I get this conflict of, you know, kindness. Awesome. Great. Let's be guided by that. But I want people to be accountable. So like with your me too example, um, because I can't think of a, a, a better one. Um, like there's kindness to self, but like, what is the bigger, is there a responsibility that we have to the larger system, ecosystem, whatever um, is, you know, if not you, then who will stand up? Like sometimes I feel, sometimes, several times, um, I can think of examples when I've, I did the right thing. What I thought was kind of taking one for the team, so to speak. And it's ended very badly for me. And I expected it to end badly. And I still did it because I'm talking about values a lot lately. Like do the right thing is also a really big driver for me, if not the biggest. Um, it's so important to me. It's disgusting. And like, and it hurts. And it's, I've gotten punished severely in multiple occasions for doing the right thing. So it wasn't necessarily the kind thing to do for myself but it was the kind thing to do to people who didn't suffer as a result in the future, right? Yeah, Tracy, what do you think? Yeah, I think, I'll, so for one, I think everyone has personal decisions to make around that area. So I would, I, I, that's one thing that I think comes up for me first because um, we all have, There's, yeah, we all have our own, our own demons, we all have our own drivers and everything else, right? Um, but this is something that's come up for me, and we've had these conversations in, in, in some of the mindfulness um, things that I do, but like, forgiveness doesn't mean being a victim. 
Forgiveness doesn't mean continuing to take abuse, um, and it doesn't mean and it doesn't mean allowing it to even happen to others. <laughs> we can be forgiving and compassionate and stand up for ourselves and stand up for other people. In fact, if we don't, then we're not actually really truly being compassionate, right? Compassion has to start from within. So if somebody is hurting us and we're allowing that to happen, we're not being compassionate. Um, but I think there's a difference between that. And so we all have our choices and, and maybe someone would speak up publicly and maybe somebody wouldn't, you know, and maybe they would have their different reasons for that. But I think no matter what to be, for me anyway, to be free and the most kind to me, I need to let go of like the resentment that I have towards someone. Even if I never speak to them again, never see them again, I can't wish them ill because then I'm fostering anger and hatred within, even if it's towards someone else, it's still here. So that's, that's what's, that's, what's coming up for me as I, as I say that. And uh, it's on a conceptual level, we can speak about it and have it all make sense, but it's very different when <laughs> we've been abused, when we've been heartbroken, when we've been traumatized, um, there's a lot of work that has to be done towards healing as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I may, I would just like to speak to something that Tracy said. Uh, Tracy, I really um, resonated with what you said about resentment, you know? And so Magda, when I was saying that I didn't want to be a part of this public crusade in the Me Too movement, it was more to tame my mind. Because he had already gone to court, there were already a couple of women who had accused him, and uh, he was already getting what was coming to him. And I wanted to cut myself off from the resentment, because, you know, revenge was part of my natural go-to, right? Mm. I, when I was in show business. And I really wanted to cut it at the root and show myself some kindness in, in the sense that, you know, I don't want to carry this burden anymore because he's going to pay for what he did. I can understand the pain he's put these women through, including me. And I've forgiven him. But like Tracy said, I did not condone the act. So when they called me up and they asked me, I said, I don't condone what he did, but I forgive him because he's a flawed person like all of us. He's, he's a victim of his own delusions, but I don't forgive the fact that he is, you know, sexually, uh, you know, uh, kind of tormented these women, including me, but I don't want to be a part of this public, this publicity, because it's not really doing anything constructive in terms of doing anything for the person hmm. or for the victims, either the perpetrator or the victims. And I, I think I needed, like Tracy said, to cut myself off from the resentment. So maybe you could call that selfish. And I, I would agree with anybody who says that, that I took a selfish stand, but I took a selfish stand for myself because I wanted to have some self-care for myself because this happened about 18 years ago. And I didn't want to relive that and put myself through that pain because they wanted to call me to court. And I said, no, I, I cannot do this. Yes. And totally get it. And by the way, just, just so, so we're clear, like I wasn't passing judgment or oh, no, 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 just thinking no, no, out no, loud no. as I tend to do. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I totally get what you're saying. But I have been asked this question that, you know, people, some of them said that, you know, oh, you know, were you chicken? Were you selfish? Did you not care about the other women? And I said, it's not that. I, I just want to practice self-care and I want to be kind to myself. And I've forgiven him. And, you know, I believe for me personally, I believe in karma. You know, you can't escape it. They say death is a leveler, but I personally believe karma is a leveler. It's, you know, whatever you put out is going to come back to you at yeah. some point, you know, in time. So uh, that's, the, I think, uh, that's the way I, I looked at it. I decided to be kind to myself. <laughs> I, I agree. But um, if someone gave me um, the infinity gauntlet and I could snap away half the people, I have a whole Thanos for those of you who are nerdy. <laughs> Um, I have a whole list of priorities that I would Thanos away with a snap. Anyway, and the guy would be on my list. I don't know who he is, but he's on my list. Magda's too cute. <laughs> she keeps the webinars alive. You know what I mean, <laughs> Yeah. Look, you talked about shiny objects in the beginning. The second you said it, I was like, oh my God, she's my people. <laughs> 
Yes. And she's and she's been wearing a shiny outfit, so she is definitely. <laughs> I'm trying to distract you. <laughs> But isn't that joy? Isn't that isn't spontaneity Absolutely. joy? In a sense? I think that that's like Absolutely. joy. Dude, it's what keeps me alive. If I didn't have joy, that's why I talk about like I, I sometimes feel funny when we have the serious serious. Wow, I can't read the words today. The serious or more serious <laughs> conversations. Jeez. Um, because yeah, I was having a mini stroke just there. Um, <laughs> because like you know, the self kindness. Like I know I do it. It's just you know. I'm on autopilot so much that when I do reflect, I'm like, oh, huh. And it's just kind of hits me like a ton of brick when I have to adult. Um, <laughs> being like joy is just easier, I think. Um, yeah, it's so hard to be unhappy. Holy crap. It's so much easier to just like laugh at yourself. Wow, that's like the antithesis of what most people think, right? <laughs> isn't it Tracy like this Magda's just the opposite like it's so hard to be unhappy it's usually people are like I want to be happy <laughs> how do you how do you get happy maybe it's generational and maybe it's the upbringing but like I grew up in a small village in Poland during communist rule we literally had martial law and food stamps when I was growing up and Chernobyl. And actually, oh, we were watching Stranger Things. And I was telling my sister, because she wasn't born yet. She was born in 85. I remember like when I was um, in like second and first grade, I think is when this whole Satanist thing was happening around the world, which actually wasn't a thing. There's some fascinating research on it. But like everybody in the world thought that Satanists were killing children and animals and whatever things. No, none of it existed. But anyway, in Poland, we, we knew who the Satanists were, like stupid freaking kids. Um, but like, I think about my childhood and like, all I can think of is how great it was and how I was never bored because there was always something to play with. There was always something to get yelled at for. There was always something to eat. Um, there was, you know, always something to sneak around and do behind your parents back. And you felt great when you didn't get caught. Uh, for me, it was usually stealing food that I wasn't supposed to be having. Um, I have, I have lots of sweet teeth, um, and cavities, but it's like, it's, I don't know, I think back to those things and like, if you ask my parents, um, they're not gonna have that same, Magda had the most wonderful, joyous childhood experience, right? They're gonna talk about, oh, it was communist and we had, we were repressed. And like my family specifically, we had a lot of different um, hardships because of who was in power and when, um, we can talk about it another time, but there's a lot of stuff that is like deeply ingrained and very traumatic um, in all levels in my family. And all I can think of was how great it was. Like, it was really fun to have the food stamps and go to the store and stand in line and then come home, you know, as a five-year-old, well, grandma, I got all the groceries. Like, I love it. If you ask my parents, they're like, oh yeah, we had to send you to get the groceries because, you know, so-and-so was working and I was working and dad was trying to, you know, he was a taxi driver at that point, I think, you know, working 18 hours a day. Like, they're not happy memories. So I just think, I don't know, like it's maybe generational, maybe it's a mindset. It's, it's all subjective, isn't it? Absolutely. But find like whatever gives you joy and kind of just lean into it. And then it really is easy. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, all I have to do is put my feet on the ground. I cannot overstate how great it is to be in mud. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, or see a dog or have a cake. I Done. understand how important mud is to you, Magda. You've mentioned it many times. Oh mud is your favorite. Mud is your God, favorite. My mom doesn't watch this because the number of times she's like, hey, have you washed your hair? And I go, yeah, like a week ago. And she's like, have you washed your hair? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Tracy, there's something that Magda said that I found uh, that, uh, that it just struck me. Uh, happiness is effortless, actually, isn't it? When you really understand the concept of happiness, uh, you don't have to wait to be happy. You can choose to be happy. Like, you know, Magda said something that really struck me. Like, I can't wait to put my feet in the dirt. I mean, the way she said it, it was so spontaneous. W what do you think about that in anybody? Yeah, I think what's coming up for me, not getting caught in definitions, but like, that's where, so happiness can sometimes be at, when, when we think, oh, I want to be happy, then that's effort, right? When we think we want to find joy, we can do that in any moment. And, you know, even through some of the most traumatic, maybe not right in that moment of trauma, but like 
like aftermath of grief and everything of like someone dying, right? Think the, the, and, and, and devastating. And, you know, it's just like such a dark period of time, but think about the funeral process. And as you know, you start sharing stories with people and, and you, and you find yourself laughing at memories of somebody that has come up. And so it's like, we have this ability as humans to be able to access joy, even in the darkest, in the darkest of moments. Maybe we're not happy at that moment, but there's that spark of joy, right? So it's there. Um, but the times when I'm least joyful is when I'm actually not in the midst of all that. And I'm just in my head about like, oh, I have so much work to do and I'm behind and I'm this and I'm that. And like, blah, blah, blah. And meantime, I'm like surrounded by paradise and I'm missing all of it, <laughs> you know? Um, so anyways, that's, um, you're right. There's an effortlessness, but it, but it, 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 the only effort I would say that it takes is presence. It's like, what are we present to in that moment? Yeah, and what are we looking for? Yeah, and that's what Magda very clearly demonstrated, like her memories of her childhood were the happiest, but maybe they weren't the same memories of her other family members because they were really struggling to put food on the table and struggling to give her a good life and her, her, her sister. So like you said, it's a narrative and uh, we have so many narratives all the time in our head, but like you said, it's easier to experience joy than to think about happiness because happiness seems to be this elusive concept that we're stretching towards the way it's presented to us but actually you can't be happy if there's no joy and the reason that i think we're talking about all this and you know people might be wondering like what happened to my kind of kind because <laughs> I, I think if you're not spontaneous in your joy and if you don't understand your own uh, sense of happiness and it could be for me, happiness is just a, a nice cup of coffee in the morning. That's all. You know, in the moment. I like what Magda is doing. She's distracting us again. I'm distracting you again. Another tiny object. No, because it's exact. This illustrates what you just talked about. So yeah. this is a flower. Again, my neighbors don't watch this webinar, so I can say this. I totally <laughs> stole the flower from them. So <laughs> I went on a walk this morning and my name, like I have beautiful yellow irises but I tried to plant these a couple of times and they just died. So this morning there was one sticking outside of the fence. So I just nicked it and I ran. And you know what? <laughs> it felt really good. And now I have this beautiful flower and I had so much joy out of it. And um, like, honestly, if you, once you know what brings you that joy or what makes you smile, what makes you laugh, like just force yourself to do it once. Yeah. I knew that nicking this flower and just having that story in my head. And then when I'm going to tell my sister when she comes home from work, she's going to be like, Magda, like, honestly, do I need to put a tracker on you? She'll say something silly like that. And I'll be like, but look at the flower. And like, honestly, the amount of joy that I'm going to have from this freaking flower until it dies. Sorry, flower, that you're going to die. Oh, I made the flower not live long enough. Anyway, like, I'm going to have so much joy out of it. So like, if you find that it can be a tiny little thing. Or honestly, like just start laughing at yourself. I know it's not a cure. I know it sounds simple, maybe silly, but like who the hell cares? Like I talk to myself and sing to myself and laugh at myself all the time, especially in public, because at this point I just don't care what anyone thinks um, in terms of like, do you think I'm silly or whatever? Like I care if, you know, you guys think I'm a good person because I want to be a good person, but I digress. But like, it's just like brightens my day. Cause I, I also feel like crap a lot. Um, I mean, I, I literally, I take anti-anxiety meds. I do. I have zero shame about that because it helps me. It makes my brain more stable. So I'm going to keep doing it anyway. I just don't have shame about things anymore. And to me, that's also self-kindness, right? Where like, I'm accepting myself and I know that I'm flawed. I know that I'm a potty mouth sometimes, et cetera. And I don't wash my hair enough. You know what? I'm not hurting anybody. Um, I'm okay with who I am. So I think like, as soon as you start being more okay with who you are and you find these things that trigger the joy in you, just freaking do it, like force yourself. It might be really hard, but just start laughing. And someone's gonna look at you and be like, oh my God, crazy lady. So the frick what? Or they'll start laughing with you and you just spread the joy. <clears throat> yeah. It reminds me, one of, one of my favorite books is The Art of Possibility. And one of the chapters is rule number seven. And rule number seven is 
don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> and it's a great reminder, right? Yeah, Absolutely. thank you. Sorry, Avril, you were speaking. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was saying that I can completely, uh, you know, relate uh, to what uh, Magda is saying because I, I do those same things. Magda is distracting me. I, I, you know, I, I can resonate with her because I talk to myself, I sing to myself, I do whatever I want. I'm, I'm in the car and I'm, you know, talking to myself, talking to the universe. And for me, that's being kind to myself because I feel joy in that moment. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me what other people think because I can't please everybody. But what I'm most interested in about is how, how am I feeling so that I can contribute or provide value to people who need me to provide value, who need me to be there for them. And when I say need, I'm not talking about need in the need sense. I'm talking about people who are around me, you know, uh, you know, everyone's feeding off each other. Like the whole of humanity is like a fishnet, right? We're all intertwined, all 8 billion of us. And what is it's like the butterfly effect, right? If you can exude joy and happiness and kindness to yourself in the moment, you really don't know how it's going to touch someone somewhere. Even being kind to an animal, you don't know how it's going to ripple effect. You know, like I have this thing about praying for dogs or cats or animals on the street. I'm, I'm, I'm a freaky Buddhist. So I will stop and I will pray and I will bless them. And my friends are petrified of that because we'll be going for dinner and they'll be like, don't stop. There's a dog there. Don't stop. And I'll stop and I'll pray for the dog and I'll bless the dog and I'll, you know, pray for the cat. And everyone's wondering if I'm going to get rabies or get some disease. And for me, it, you know, I, I'm doing it for, for a bit from a selfish stance because it gives me so much joy. It gives me so much joy, joy just to know that I've blessed this creature and maybe it'll have, you know, a better life or maybe it'll have some good energy and, you know, so I totally resonate with this. I'm unabashedly, uh, you know, selfish when it comes to feeling joy. Um, Avril, I'm exploding over here and I know Tracy knows why. Um, I had this really proud moment a couple of days ago when Tracy um, called me from Nicaragua and said that there was this dog that was, um, I don't know if it was aggressive or just, you know, didn't seem like a very, or pack of dogs, I think it was, they weren't very nice. And she said, she thought to herself, what would Magda do? And she started saying, hi, doggies. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you, I resonate with this. It works. I, I it literally works. have neighbors who, when they see me on a walk, some of them take their dog another direction because they know that if the dog encounters me, we're going to be rolling on the ground. We're going to be scratching bellies. The dog is going to get dirty and it's going to need a bath. So for that reason, some dog owners in this area avoid me like the plague. <laughs> I don't, I don't bless. I'm not, you know, as, as a, um, enlightened as, oh, as okay. my co-panelists. I just, I, 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 a dog with the dogs. I think I actually am part dog anyway, different conversation for different time. Be like a child or be like a dog. There you go. Either yeah. one works. Innocent, <laughs> innocence. Yeah. Innocence and no expectation. Yeah. I think animals are wonderful. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a sucker for animals and birds. I talk to the birds and the animals all the time. So my mother once uh, was joking with me and saying, uh, what are you trying to be, St. Francis of Assisi? I was like, no. <laughs> because he had this relationship with animals and birds. I was like, no, I'm just, no, so I just good. feel happy. Yeah, all dogs are good dogs. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna Fine. pause that conversation because that's a Pandora's box. You you absolutely like, you are talking about <laughs> animals and dogs, and like three hours later, we're still here, and I'm still yapping, and I probably like found a stray to show everybody. Like that's just who I am as a human. Like all the animals I've ever had just kind of show up at the house, and I just go, okay, fine. I guess I'm adopting you. Anyway, back to coaching. So the moral that I got. <laughs> From today I love Tracy when you bring things back to this whole like help yourself before you can help others and I think this is kind of like a great illustration of that like how can we be there for for our clients if we're not you know we're not okay with ourselves we're not kind to ourselves and the other thing that I also thought about um again it's all about the client I know that but a lot of times when you are coaching someone I feel like that mirror part of coaching that we provide where we kind of 
rephrase or sorry, or we state something that someone has told us or we summarize it and they kind of go, oh, wow, oh yeah. Um, to me, that's also kind of what has come up. It's like this um, finding the, the, the hints of joy, the hints of whatever that they're doing and kind of pointing out, this is what you are already doing. Like stop beating yourself up. I think that's also a beautiful thing that coaches do. And I've experienced many times when um, I've been coached where I didn't even realize I was doing or saying something and the coach helps me and it just brightens my day. So anyway, that is my kind of tie back in because you know we're at the time and um, I'm trying to add value beyond just dog and mud stories. That's my takeaway. Tracy, what's your takeaway? Um, wow, I, I just got distracted because what you were talking about was the A and Lassie. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Leave it to Tracy to be like, well, let's have a theory about something. <laughs> my God. Um, my takeaway is um, that I think what I am looking to continue trying to embrace for myself is finding those moments of joy, not taking myself so seriously. Um, and, and yeah, bringing that lightness to others by not trying to bring lightness to others, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been, it's been a really, really, um, it has the wheels turning for me um, in terms of even just thinking about like expectations and what am I, am I actually expecting something from this? Um, because then that isn't joyful, you know, and sort of looking at that as well. So I don't know if that's a, a solid takeaway, but that's the stuff that's kind of bubbling up in my head. And uh, so I guess I'm taking up, taking away the bubbling up. <laughs> yeah. You're defizzing. I'm deep. No, I want to, I want the fizz to continue. And then I'm going to. Oh, um, okay. Never mind. This is why I'm not in charge. <laughs> Carry on. So yeah. Um, and Avril, any closing words? Oh, what I got out of this is um, my kind of kind is to be joyous in the moment and for it to be effortless. And as far as I'm, you know, you know, about to start my PCC journey with the Kocharya. And for me, I think kindness is something that is so necessary uh, to embody without judgment and without expectation, because we can't expect anything because the client is king, the coachy is king, and it's their agenda and, you know, it's life's agenda as to what they have to, what it has to offer. And I think for me to be more mindful of that, that if I take care of myself and I'm in a kind space with myself and it's effortless and it comes with practice, of course, because I'm not there yet, um, then it's going to translate into bringing something of value that the, you know, the client can take away from that without any kind of judgment. And I've enjoyed this conversation and being with Magda and you has just been wonderful and all the, pan all the attendees and I love that uh, Magda's waving the <laughs> flower in our face, the striking purple flower. And I just wanted to thank everybody for their comments. It's just been wonderful and I've learned so much and both of you are amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely thank you. to be um, with such intelligent and kind and knowledgeable and wonderful people, both here and in the chat and don't forget your homework, everyone. I know you're leaving, but your homework is, whether you're here live or listening later, go on your socials and use the hashtag mykindofkind and tell us your stories of kindness, of kindness you've given, received, what it means to you. Um, I don't know, or just put, oh, or just put a picture of your dog. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Not cats, because as we've, discussed, as we've discussed in previous webinars, cats, I mean, I love mine, but like, a, I got stabbed, full circle, <laughs> multiple times today already once. And also cats are kind of serial killers. Um, this is also <laughs> another webinar where we discussed that you should not be a serial killer. Anyway, my kind of kind, my kind of kind is the hashtag. So um, post something kind. And if you don't like dogs 
okay, first of all, we need to have a chat because that's like not cool. But um, <laughs> then you can post a flower, but um, you really should like dogs because they are amazing. And we need to have a talk if you don't want to be on my Thanos snap list because oh, wow. my dogs are going to be on that list. Very low on the list, so you might still make it. But you better not risk it. Like, do you want to risk it? No. So just like dogs. <sighs> wow. That was important, okay? <laughs> okay, Magda. Uh, she's infectious, right. isn't she? No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> you should not be. You, no, you're just, I'm not. You know, I mean, you're unabashedly you and we love it. We love you. We love it. I'm going to go post my dog right now. Okay. <laughs> Very handsome. <laughs> Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Tracy. Thank Bless you all so of you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.